A few weeks back, Disney revealed the next big animated project from Dan Pavenmeyer. Phineas and Ferb 3. Or as it's actually called, Hamster and Gretel. You see what he did there? Hamster into the pencil. Now, this is gonna be a little bit of a divisive video. I didn't talk about this right away because honestly, I had to really sit on it. Don't get me wrong, with or without Swampy Marsh, Dan Pavenmeyer has proved to be a creative genius on his own. And even though we basically just have the premise and some designs, something about this concept just isn't it. Now, I am not here to tear this show that hasn't even had a single episode released apart, but I do just want to run through the premise and give it some constructive criticism. Because although I'm sure there's fun to be had with this show, again, it's Dan Pavenmeyer, I already feel like the songs are gonna hit, the rapid fire comedy is gonna be a knee slapper, and you know there's gonna be some insanely talented people on board. I'm keeping an open mind. So where does this premise lose me? Especially when compared to Phineas and Ferb and Milo Murphy's Law. Even though the show is going to be its own thing, and I'm not trying to hold the show exactly to the same standards, same network, same creator, or at least half of the duo, it's worth putting out there. Disney Channel is welcoming the newest superhero duo to the fold thanks to the Emmy-winning Dan Pavenmeyer. The co-creator and executive producer of Phineas and Ferb is has set, oh my god, please fix this article, has set his newest animated series, Hamster and Gretel, which is inspired by his relationship with his younger sister. Oh no, emotional ties? I can't criticize this. The Disney Channel has greenlit the music-filled Hamster and Gretel, which introduces Kevin and his younger sister Gretel. But Kevin? My name is Kevin. Maybe I was all wrong about this shit. The two are about to be bestowed superpowers by space aliens. What in the hell? But something goes awry. Gretel and her pet hamster, named Hamster, receive new abilities. Now, protective older brother Kevin must figure out how to work with both Gretel and her pet hamster to protect their city from mysterious dangers. All is explained in Pava Meyer's elevator pitch above. Okay, so the show is about Gretel and her much older brother Kevin, who is driving her to soccer practice. They get stopped by aliens who say, the two of you have been chosen to receive superpowers. Even he doesn't know why the hamster is in the car. So after really thinking about it, I feel like my issue with this pitch, I know, expert opinion from someone not even in the industry, is that the concept itself is fine. But it feels and looks very typical. Combining the synopsis and elevator pitch, Kevin is a much older, overprotective sibling. Which sounds like Hand is about the snitching, and the lead characters already reminding me of Lee Phineas and Ferb characters kind of concerns me. Even in understanding that this was inspired by Pop and Mike's relationship with his sister, if there was one thing about Milo Murphy's Law, it's that none of the lead characters reminded me of the lead Phineas and Ferb characters. Granted, the lead character ended up joining the cast, but you know, showbiz baby, and in Kevin and being overprotective, we have to assume that Gretel gives them a reason to be overprotective. Which, and again I'm making assumptions, leads me to believe that Gretel is going to be the gets into trouble, adventurous, happy-go-lucky kid type. Which is fine, but yeah, it's kind of been overdone. I understand having that eager, optimistic type lead character because, again, it's a children's show, that's the demographic they're greenlit for and have to appeal to. Even though a lot of Disney TVA, and especially the Pop and Meyer shows, appeal to pretty much all ages, in my opinion, there's not much about the characters themselves that's intrinsically tied into the premise that makes me care about them. There's a hint that because Kevin is overprotective, there's going to be friction between him and Gretel because now Gretel can take care of herself, making his assumed sworn duty null and void. I don't know how far he can go with that, or just the typical jealousy route. But again, at the same time, I'm still scratching my head and kind of saying, well, didn't they do all of this with Candace? Phineas and Ferb explore the older sibling who's overprotective, the older sibling who's jealous that no one really cares for them because everyone's focused on the younger sibling. And you know, when Amphibia and the Owl House was first announced, despite their premises being extremely similar on paper, a teenage girl goes to a magical world. Not only did both premises manage to offer a lot, frogs, witches, magic, found family, a swampy, foresty world, and hell, we also had the emotional hook of Anne making a friend for the first time, Luce deciding to try and become a witch, fighting a new place where she fits in after feeling like an outcast back home. The hook doesn't even need to be that emotional or deep, like with Molly McGee for example. The hook of that show is that although Molly is bright and optimistic, she has a grumpy pessimistic ghost bound to her who enjoys spreading misery to others. I want to see where that goes. How both of those conflicting perspectives can contribute to an adventure. What can they learn from one another? But again with Hamster and Gretel, I don't know if Kevin's just going to be a Candace 2.0 or just bitter the entire time. Man, I wanted superpowers. Why did the hamster get superpowers? 
Speaking of the hamster, aside from dunking on my boy Kevin, I'm not sure what he serves beyond validating the show's punny name. And despite having superpowers, he just feels less impressive than Perry the Platypus, Agent P. Dioji, whose name was just dog spelt out. Having a simple punchline that landed almost every time? Because it was just that flexible? What does Hamster have on Rufus? Maybe my issue is that these animal characters in Disney shows have typically been B-plots or side characters, even with Agent P. But now the animal character is the titular character? The first titular character? And it's troubling because how much can you do with said animal character? Is Hamster going to start talking? The dude's name is Hamster! <laughs> At least the OG is still funny to say. I'd take a dog named Hamster or just a hamster named Hamster. Maybe powers will allow Hamster to talk and you can figure out an interesting lead personality from there. Granted, Perry had a fully fleshed out personality, but it is one that I imagine also came naturally to the writers because Perry cared about his family. He even cared about Doof to an extent, but he was just also always fed up with Alka and Doofenshmirtz BS. But there was a reason why Perry's subplots were accompanied with his own set of characters. Perry would not have been just as effective if he was tagging along with Phineas and Ferb's day-to-day, -day, or Candace's schemes to bust her brothers. What does Hamster contribute to this trio? I haven't seen the show, I'm not making any final judgment, but I do hope when the first episode arrives, they are able to make an impression on me with Hamster. And of course, actually surprise me with Kevin and Gretel's relationship. Deliver a lifelike sibling dynamic that's fun and entertaining to watch, but is also believable. One that siblings at home can resonate with. But by far, the biggest thing about this pitch that's putting me off is the whole superhero aspect. And this is where the visual aspects of the pitch come into play as well. It feels very uninspired. The run-of-the-mill caped crusader, mass secret identity, or who knows, maybe it won't be secret, complete with the first letters of their name on their chest. You can give them superpowers without making them the stereotype superhero. It's 2020. But this is 2010 at best. It's crazy that we live in an age where the big superhero players are Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Panther, reinventions of Batman, The Flash, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Scarlet Witch, and Vision. Yet this show gives us basic Superman, Batman-esque looks. I don't want to call it lazy, but it definitely feels uninspired. Kind of same with the whole alien aspect of it as well. Granted, aliens and superheroes go hand in hand more than one would initially think. This is also where I can't ignore Phineas and Ferb and Milo Murphy's Law, when both shows, especially in their latest outings, heavily involve aliens with their stories. At a certain point, maybe you shouldn't pull out the alien card again. Especially when it sounds like obtaining these powers are going to be a twist of fate, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more to it. Maybe it'll be another chosen one thing. But if it was just truly random dumb luck, why does it need to be aliens? We can't pull a Spider-Man or anything? Hell, even Joker fell into a vat of acid. So why aliens? And if we're doing aliens in 2020, wouldn't they get them cooler costumes? I'm sorry, I am really am stuck in the costumes. If there's one big thing I would immediately change, it's that they will have costumes that are actually cool to look at, an appealing design? Come on, dog. It's Disney. Kim Possible's design wasn't a joke. I just don't know how we go from female leaves with a cool factor to this. I'm sorry, Dan. Oh my god, please don't hate me. So since I'm dishing out all this constructive criticism, what would I actually do to change it? Would my pitch be better? Probably not, but I'm gonna try anyways. First things first, I'm throwing out Hamster as a character entirely. You'll see why. The show would still focus on the dynamic between Kevin and Gretel. But instead of Kevin being overprotective, he's already going to be innately jealous of his younger sister. Why? Because not only does Kevin feel as if Gretel is the favorite of the family, but he just feels as if Gretel is just better at life than him. It's impossible for Kevin to see his sister's flaws. And for the worse, she's got great grades. She has more friends than him. She has more hobbies and extracurriculars than him. He feels as if she has more talents than him. She's basically bested him in every way. Whereas all Kevin really has going for him is his underground band, because you need that musical tie-in, which his parents detest. They would rather have him focus on improving his grades in order to pursue a career they know will go somewhere. But then the incident happens. It looks like Kevin's going to get superpowers. Whether if you want to do the aliens or just have it be an over-the-top comedic freak accident, it looks like life is about to hand him a big win. 
But the smallest mishap occurs on top of that. Kevin is seemingly snubbed. Brettel gets the superpowers in a non-generic costume, whereas Kevin, instead of not getting any powers at all, ends up transforming into a hamster. A hamster that also has superpowers, but because he's that teeny tiny size, he's nowhere near as powerful or impressive as his sister. Now luckily, Kevin can still return to his human form, but whenever he wants to use those powers, he has to return to the state of the hamster. Imagine Shazam, but instead of becoming a fully grown man, you just become a hamster. Despite feeling jaded and robbed, this was the one good thing he was going to have that made him stand out from his sister, and still, she ended up getting the cooler powers. The two still embark on adventures together, and within those adventures, the show is able to unravel the truth. Gretel does have flaws of her own, and she does look up to her big brother. She actually feels as if she has a lot to learn from Kevin. There are things that Gretel feels as if she isn't good at, things that she feels as if her brother excels at. From certain social aspects, to being himself, to his awesome underground music, to moments on the battlefield. There would be perks at Kevin's hamster transformation. And as a powerful flying hamster, he's able to bring about a different perspective as a superhero. A somewhat cynical but feel-good sibling show that I feel as if people at home could immediately relate to. People who feel as if one sibling is a favorite child and the quote unquote favorite child themselves. Slap on that with some rockin' tunes and you'd have a great time. I don't know, is my pitch worse than the original? It's worse, isn't it? But as always, these are just my thoughts and I want to hear yours. What do you think? How do you feel about Hamster and Gretel? Does the synopsis pique your interest? And if not, what gripes do you have? Drop your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RoundtableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Audrey Fox. We're also on Instagram. Help the Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of the channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Audrey Fox, signing out.